Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Hotel Montleon. Thank you again for coming here and helping us celebrate our 125th anniversary. We're delighted to host this Earth Day event and have an exciting lineup of speakers and exhibitors about, to tell you about environmental initiatives going on in New Orleans and in the state of Louisiana. Penny, thank you very much and congratulations to you for the, the great work you're uh, embarking upon and announcing today with, uh, with your new group. And uh, I'm, I'm very honored to be with you today. I want to congratulate the Hotel Monteleone as well. I, this is one of my fondest memories uh, growing up in Louisiana of this hotel during these 125 years. When I was a little boy, my dad had a friend who would uh, invite him to the Sugar Bowl every year in, in Tulane Stadium and, and I got to come a couple of times. And, this is where we came. This is where he would meet that group of people before they'd go to the Sugar Bowl. So you can imagine as a little boy from Baton Rouge coming to this uh, magnificent facility. It has, has great memories for me. So th congratulations to this hotel on its anniversary as well. And uh, to have a, a Louisiana icon like uh, George as a part of this, uh, we appreciate everything he has done to uh, spread the word about things that are great in Louisiana. We're, we've embarked on a new campaign to promote Louisiana and it's our Pick Your Passion campaign. I hope you've seen it. That's the way we're going to brand our state. Louisiana with exclamation points as the eyes in Louisiana. And the phrase, Pick Your Passion, because we are passionate about so, about so many, many things. Our, our food, our music, our love of art, and so many different types of art, from music and performance and the graphic arts and uh, the beautiful kind of iconic work that the Blue Dog represents for Louisiana is what we celebrate. And that's what we want people to think of. And they ought to also think of our love and our passion for our land, uh, for our earth. Uh, we are a state that cherishes ourselves as the sportsman's paradise and appreciates all the many assets that God has given us in this land. We are here uh, because those French founders of Louisiana in the late 1600s recognized the importance of the Mississippi River, uh, that important body of water that winds through this very special place that we call Louisiana. And we, as Louisianians, have long appreciated all of the abundant resources that we have, uh, sometimes perhaps not as diligently as we should have. But uh, a day like this and a celebration like, like this uh, makes us mindful of our obligation to uh, protect this earth, protect this water that runs through this earth that's so important to Louisiana. The great Louisiana writer, Harnett Kane, uh, once described our coastal marsh, and I want to touch on our coastal marsh because it's what we're losing. We only lose about a football field of land every 38 minutes in Louisiana, if you can imagine that, gone into the Gulf of Mexico. Harnett Kane talked about that coastal marsh, and he said it's a place that seems to be unable to make up its mind whether it will be earth or water, so it compromises. And it's that compromise that has resulted in the loss of earth in Louisiana, something we ought to all be very mindful of uh, and working diligently to save America's wetland because our coastline is America's wetland and that's what we need to make certain that we're vigilant about protecting. It's been ravaged by weather, it's been ravaged by man over the course of years and we've got to be a lot more cognizant of the need to make certain that we preserve that wetland. The trees that, that George Roderick paints so beautifully, that oak tree, symbolic of the Atchafalaya Basin, really, of, of that land uh, all throughout Louisiana, but particularly in South Louisiana, that swamp land. You know, those trees have roots, and those root systems hold the earth together. And that's the difference between swamp land and marshland in Louisiana. That swamp land has trees uh, rooted in the soil that hold the land together, and we don't lose it. That marshland has no trees. It's grass. It's got no root system, and it's susceptible to the ravages of wind and water. And it's why we're losing that kind of land. And we as Louisianians, we as Americans, need to make certain we not only treasure but preserve all the land that comprises our great state, be it the piney woods of north and central Louisiana, the swamp land of southwest Louisiana, the marshland threatened on the coast of Louisiana. It's our little piece of the world, and we've got to make certain we make the right strides to protect it. Now, Penny mentioned litter, and I want to take a, just a moment to, to mention that as well. Uh, we're the sportsman's paradise, and we pride ourselves on our recreational abundance in Louisiana. But unfortunately, sometimes we also rank near the top at littering this great paradise that we have. And we've all got to be mindful uh, of not doing that. From an educational standpoint, we've got to make young people grow up thinking it's not okay to toss 
cups out the window or to put cans in the back of pickup trucks only to see them fly out as they travel down the interstate at high rates of speed. We've got to educate young people. We've got to make certain we enforce the very strict laws we have to protect the environment and protect ourselves from litter. And we've all got to have a greater sense of pride as Louisianians about the way our land looks. And I hope all of us will, will take whatever steps we can to make certain that we're not trashing Louisiana. Both our waterways, our highways, our byways, and, and everything that, uh, that spreads across this great state, we've got to make it clean. I'm going to close by telling you a, a quick story about a movie. You know, we're the third most significant movie-making state in America, behind California and New York now. Our tax credits have attracted movie makers from across the world. So I have a real penchant, because I authored that legislation when I was in the Senate, so I have a real fondness for the growth of this industry. But one of my favorite movies, and I hope a lot of you have seen it, uh, is a documentary uh, called March of the Penguins. Uh, Academy Award winner in 2005 about Antarctica. And I'm going to tell you very briefly about this, although we're miles and miles away from Antarctica, both in space and time and climate, but there's a, there's a, um, a message, I think, in the story of that great movie. It's about the emperor penguins who march uh, side by side for 20 miles into the tundra of Antarctica once a year to mate. And they mate uh, in this one location where they've been doing it for millions or at least thousands upon thousands of years. Uh, and a ritual takes place that's captured in this documentary. The mating ritual occurs, uh, the mother gives birth to a single egg, and as that single egg is laid, she transfers the egg to the father penguin, who places the penguin uh, who protects the penguin within his body in the, in the sub-freezing weather. Uh, the mother marches 20 miles back to the ocean to get some nutrients, to get some nourishment. And the father, for two months, protects that egg. He assumes the nurturing role. Mama gets her nourishment and marches those 20 miles back to basically relieve daddy after those chicks are born. So the father oversees the birth of those penguins. And mama comes back, and daddy trudges back to the water to get some nourishment. A lot of them don't make it. But this cycle continues over and over. And this Academy Award-winning documentary captures that love and that nurturing that these penguins, and particularly that father penguin, has to give to this egg. And so it may be a bit of a stilted analogy, but, but that egg is really our earth. Uh, and, and that father and that mother are responsible for protecting that egg during that fragile time when we don't know whether the chick will emerge or not. Uh, and our earth is much the same way, only we're the penguins. We're the ones who have to be responsible for protecting this fragile egg of ours and make certain that all aspects of it are protected and so that for future generations uh, those chicks will emerge and, and our earth will continue to survive as we know it. We have not necessarily been the best stewards over the past uh, centuries, but uh, we've got to look to the future and we as Louisianians in particular have to look to the future as we take steps to try and protect our coastline and appreciate all the abundance that, that God has given us in this great land that, that we call home. So I appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this presentation today. I can't wait to see the quilt and I congratulate all of you who are participating and, and thank you for being a part of this very important celebration.